Would you like to learn what it takes to rehabilitate a coal mine? Well, today we're gonna find out. I'm coming to you from Nag Park here in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and right here is the Brooks Coal Mine. And just a little bit, some members of the UGM group are gonna take us on the inside to show the work that's being completed in order to bring this mine open to the public once again. If you want to learn more, all you need to do is come along with me. So right now I'd like to introduce you to my friend Chris of the Underground Miners Group. In just a few minutes I'm going to turn things over to him. He's going to take us on the inside, tell us a little bit about the mine, and show us the work that's being completed in order to have this open to the public once again. So we're out of the Brooks Mine in Neog Park, Scranton, Pennsylvania. And this mine was opened in 1902 by Reese G. Brooks. And um, it was open until 1938 for people of Scranton to come and tour the mine as an exhibition. You could walk in, see what anthracite mining was like. 1938 it closed, 19, early 1950s it was reopened and re-timbered and rebuilt actually by Moffat Coal Company. And they brought the mine cars in and did a bunch of new work to the mine. Then it closed again in 1975 and hasn't been open since. So we proposed the idea to um, Nayog Park and the city of Scranton to reopen the mine and everybody was on board. So here we go. <laughs> it has one way in and one way out, which is the portal. So there's no ventilation in the mine, which is one of the reasons that it closed as per state mine laws. So we brought in a blower fan. This blows 3,700 CFM of air into the mine. So this air tube goes all the way back to the end of the drift and then it blows the air out. So um, there's no bad air or gas or anything in here, but it's good just to get some fresh air because it's kind of stagnant and stale back there. It also helped there was no roof support here when we first came in. And this roof is, it's not great right by the opening. And that's typical of most mines. When you get right close to the surface at the opening, in the summer or in the winter time, you have a lot of freeze and thaw. So water that comes down freezes and then cracks the rocks apart. And there was a couple loose rocks here. So in order to timber this so you could walk through and actually run mine cars through here later when we get the track back in, um, we couldn't put three piece sets in to support the roof, which you'll see here in a little bit. So there, it, would, it would just make it too small. So we had the idea of putting the rails back up and we had um, some rock hammers and chipped these hitches in the rock for the rail to go in and then supported it with oak planks up above. And that's just one way of doing roof support so that you clear yourself out when you have you know, good rock ribs on the side like that. The vein starts to come up here right at the bottom. This is the outcrop of the Dunmore number two and the number three vein. They faulted together here at the surface. So we'll see that. It's kind of dirty, it's covered in rock dust from when we were chipping up there. But the props, you know, it's all new wood, it's oak. We get this from R&R &R logging up in Mahoopany. And we just got a fresh load today. So it's all timbered as per Pennsylvania state mine law. We have the props going either side, air tube over here. Made a nice little bench for holding some stuff. <laughs> and then we get to our three-piece sets here. This is uh, where the roof was a little more, a little more drummy. The, the actual top of the mine's in good shape, but there's a couple little loose pieces that we wanted to support. If it was an active mine, we probably wouldn't even have done this because it's not that bad. But since the public's gonna be coming in here, we wanna make sure everything's perfectly safe. 
So we put up five three-piece sets here, and uh, we have our plank for line in the top here. We got a bunch left yet, and cribbing off the corner. What's up, Scott? Not much, sir. Scott's in here doing a little bit of work. Hi, YouTubers. <laughs> this is our first chamber that we come to. Cleaning this out, we got a little something special we got planned to build up in here. That'll be fun. And here's a buying car. This buggy was brought in and uh, by Moffitt in 1952, we believe. It's got an interesting feature. It actually has wheel wells in it, which is pretty neat in, in the bottom. But I guess it makes it a pain to dump because coal and stuff gets locked up on there as you when you would dump the car. That would have been a door on the end. There's an end door, so the car would get tipped up and the load dumped out. We actually just emptied this out. It had a false bottom in it. There was a board across right here, and it was heaped up with coal. We took all the coal out for now. We're going to um, put some new track in. Well, first we got to dig the bottom down a little bit. There's about two feet of gravel that was put in here at some point in time. When we were putting these all the timber in, we have to hitch it into the bottom rock, not just set it on gravel or whatever. So we had to dig dig down till we found it. It's about two feet down there. So these things are really you know quite a bit longer. So we're going to dig this floor back down to where it originally was and then put all new rail in and pull this buggy out. See if it's worth salvaging and maybe restore it. The steel's getting a little rough on this because it's spent, you know, 70 some years, 80 years underground. Now this is the second chamber. We also have some fun ideas what we're going to do in here. So it's going to it's going to be a pretty neat little mine tour when it's all done. It's great, you know, people can just walk in and walk back out not so involved as to going down, you know, getting in the car and going down the slope, like the Lackawanna Mine Tour, or, you know, getting on the train at number nine or Pioneer and riding in. This, you know, park goers could just come and walk in and check the place out and then go. So another reason that um, it hadn't reopened yet is by state mine law, it has to have a second opening. So that's something we have to work on as soon as we get all the timber work done in here. We're going to put a new, a new second opening outside right here, which will come out, um, right by the mine car, or just past the mine cars outside. So as we walk across the, well, I guess it would be almost a, a, a return airway, you would call it, in an active mine. This was set up as a, as a small model mine to show what an actual coal mine was like um, in the city in Scranton, with pretty flat pitch coal up here. And, you know, you have your, your main entry like we came in, the drift or what you will, and then you have a chamber coming up and cross cuts for uh, air to return across the face. So this would have been your, the face of coal. And they have a, a small chamber driven underneath here, little one, like they're advancing, <clears throat> advancing in the bottom vein here, low coal. And it's si simulated with all these lumps here that it was a, a shot was fired off and all the coals laying here ready to be shoveled out and put in the mine car. And then the main drift just continues along here. And here's as far as we made it with the timber sets so far. And it just goes up and ends right there at the face. And this is the end of our air tube. And the rail is going to come out. This old timber is going to come out. And we don't have enough room here um, to put just two props because to get it up against here, it would come down right almost on that railhead. And this one would be over a little ways. But so what we decided we're going to do, we're going to do a post and bar style timber here which is basically like the three piece set without a leg. So we'll get a chip and hammer and dig a, basically a hole into the coal here. They, they were done in a couple spots up there at the face. There was a couple, they had just a uh, collar across, kind of like what we did with the rail at the portal. But we'll dig a hole in here and then slide the leg in. So one side of it will be supported by the rib on this side, and then it'll come over here and then have a leg down this side. We could actually put it in here and just have a, thing across, but we want to show all the different styles of timbering as well. So it'd be neat to have a post and bar style system here. And they'll be done every three feet right up to the face. I'm sorry, every five feet right up to the face. I think we got three or four of them to put in. And then, uh, then we just got to timber the second chamber there and all the timber work's done. And then it's time to start putting that second opening outside. The plan is to have it open for tourists in the spring of 2023. We'll see how that plays out, but that's the idea. And the one big thing I, I always like to add on this is that 
you know, this has been completely funded by private individuals and businesses with donations to our group. When we proposed this to the city, being a nonprofit, we said that we're going to take care of the funding for the project as well, so the city doesn't have to. And um, we thought we were going to have to go get grants, go after businesses for you know large loans or whatever, or not loans, but large donations to do the project. And it hasn't been that way. We've had uh, fundraisers on Facebook and just local ones, and just asking. We put our donation box outside when we're working here, and there's so many people that come by and say. I, I remember going in there when, when I was a kid, and it's great that this is getting reopened. It hasn't been reopened in, you know, 50, almost 50 years now. So, I better check my math on that one. <laughs> but, um, it's been a while. It's been a while, yeah. And people throw, throw some money in their don donation box, and it's been, it's been steadily increasing and keeping this project going. We haven't had to put any of our own money into it and go or go look for big you know grants from from anybody so it's really neat that we're doing this to give back to the community so they can have this mine to go check out again but they're also supporting it and funding it so it's, it's that's a really special special aspect of it so we had a little bit of excitement here just this past week we had the we had our first state mine inspection on thursday and they were very happy with the progress the work we're doing and also on thursday we launched our website which has been down for about a year while well, my buddy Dan, underground miner Dan, has been working on that tirelessly. <laughs> it was a lot of work, but it really came out fantastic. And, you know, I, the, some of the pictures that Dan acquired over the last couple of years, or the last year or so, to put on this, and just some pictures that we've had that we never made public and are, are on there are pretty spectacular. So check out the new website and I guess before we go out just some you know the plans for this place when it's done and open to the public um, we'll hold our special events here our private tours but we'll also have it open to the public on weekends um, of course it'll be attended we'll have, we'll be in here um, to to answer questions give people you know tours walkthroughs whatever they want and we also have some pretty fun special ideas for the place but we got to keep that a little secret until she's ready to open. Can't give out all the secrets. Can't give out all the secrets. So, anyway, thanks, Jay, for the coming along and checking the place out. I hope you guys and enjoy what we're doing here.
want this. So hopefully that answers the question of what does it take to rehabilitate a coal mine? Well, we found out firsthand the work that's involved and hopefully by spring 2023, the work is completed and you guys yourself will be able to come here and take a tour through the Brooks Mine here at Nayak Park. A big special thanks to Chris and all the members here of the UGM group. They are really fantastic at what they do. They're passionate, knowledgeable, and they're here most Saturdays doing work. So if you wanna come here to you know talk to the guys see you know at least what the work has been done on the outside or even drop a donation in that donation box you're welcome to do so be sure to check out their website down below in the description if you have any questions feel free to ask down below if i can't answer it i'm sure i can get the answer for you from one of these guys thanks so much for watching today and until next time i'll see you real soon in the next video